Hello everyone, my name is Taylor Cassidy and today I'm sharing with you why BAPS is the greatest black classic film of all time. Why the heck am I talking about this? Like, wh why Why is this coming up? Well, recently in October, I saw that Netflix had put the movie BAPS on the site. Whenever I was a child, I used to watch the movie BAPS all the time. So when I rewatched it again after all of these years, I came to the realization. I came to the evolved realm of thinking that realizing that BAPS is the greatest black American American classic film of all time. Maturing is realizing that BAPS is the best film ever. Now hold on. Hold on now, don't get your panties in a twist because I know that some of y'all out there are about to bring in the shade, about to bring in the hate, want to tussle with me talking about what about Friday, what about poetic justice, what about boys in the hood, beautiful movies, great movies. This is just my thought, my thinking. I'm your resident black person coming to give you my opinion, all right? <laughs> I'm the culture captain. So what is this movie even like, you know, what's the deal? Why are, why are we looking at these two beautiful women? Why do we care about them? Well, let me tell you the plot of the movie before I give you the facts. BAPS stands for Black American Princesses, and it was a film made in the 90s, and Google summarizes it as waitresses at a Georgia restaurant, Nisi and Mickey, decide to fly to Los Angeles for a music video audition in order to raise money for their dream project, a business that combines soul food dining with a hair salon. Circumstances eventually find the Southern ladies on the estate of Mr. Blake Moore, an elderly millionaire. Despite their vast cultural differences, Nisi and Mickey form close bonds with Blakemore and his butler, Alfred. Just kidding, his name is Manly. That was a pretty good definition, but I'm about to give you the whole plot. So if you don't want to know the whole plot and you want to watch it yourself, now's the time to click off the video. All right, time's up. Google got it right. They decide to go to LA because Nisi saw ads in the newspaper about, oh, we're looking for our new music video girl to be in Heavy D's music video, and we're gonna give you $10,000. And so they're like, $10,000? Hell yeah. And while they're in LA, Nisi goes to the music video audition and she does her little thing and she doesn't get it. But I will tell you, their outfits put every one of those skinny little dancers to shame. While they're sad, like, damn, we didn't get in. We came into LA for all this way for nothing, right? This fine, this fine man walks up to Mickey, right? And he's like, hey, how you doing? My boss is also making a music video and we want you guys to be in it. So they're in LA, ain't got nowhere to go. The purpose that they came there for is now ruined so they're like you know what why not so they get in the car with this man uh ladies don't do that and he takes them to a mansion and when i'm talking mansion i really do mean mansion they knock on the door the butler comes up and they're like why you black bitches here just kidding he didn't say that but he was thinking it they get told there's an elderly millionaire that owns the house who's about to die from cancer so he only has like a few days to live they brought nisi and mickey there to pretend to be his long lost black true loves granddaughter because you know they could marry because you know racism and shit nisi and mickey are like yes we'll do this good deed like you know whatever whatnot everything's going smooth they're making the old man happy the old man's getting to know them the old man is nice you know they're getting real close right come to fine fucking out the man that brought them there not the attractive fine man the elderly millionaire's nephew the white man was taking advantage of the girls because he was trying to get his uncle's fortune. So he basically brought them there to spend time with him so he could take pictures of them and show them to a judge. So the judge could look at them and be like, why is this old man hanging out with two black girls? And declare him incompetent so the nephew could get the estate and all of the money. Does he get away with it? Well, here's how we find out. You know that attractive man, oh my God? He faked being in love with Mickey so that he could get her to get her fingerprints on the safe where they kept a ring to further try and incriminate them. So they were working together. The nephew and the attractive man were working together. Ain't that shady? They both get found out and they're like, whoa, bro, this is crazy. Like what's going on? And in the midst of all of this, the man goes to the hospital. He's, he's about to die. He's about to 
you know. And so he's in the hospital. He's on his deathbed. So Nisi and Mickey, obviously, this whole time, even before this, they've been like, we can't keep lying to him. We're becoming friends. We can't keep lying, saying I'm his granddaughter, this, that, and the third, right? They're on the deathbed. Nisi is like, bro, I'm trying to tell you this, but I don't want to break your heart. Like, I'm not who you think I am. Old man on his deathbed is like, shh, dies dies obviously Nisi's like crying because she never got to tell him right she never got to tell him that she was lying she wasn't she was making it all up the lawyer who was there with them turns to her and goes y'all ready for this get your tissues turns to her and goes Nisi it's okay he already knew you see Lily Lily is the the grandmother the the dude's long lost lover Lily never had any children so he already knew that means you know what that means y'all that means this old man hung out with those two girls or these two girls because he wanted to because he wanted to spend time with them because he cared about them that man said black lives matter that man said black women deserve luxury so he died knowing the truth and still loving them Take that in, everybody. Take that in. Take in, take that in how powerful that is. In the midst of all of this, Nisi and Mickey have boyfriends that they just broke up with at home. And during the movie, they came all the way to LA from Georgia to surprise them, to get all cleaned up and reclaim their love. Ain't that beautiful? Go black love. Whenever the man dies, the lawyer comes and gets ready to read the will. Where's all this money going? Where's this man's bag going? She reads the will and they find out that Nisi and Mickey get a whole lot of money. The butler, who they also become friends with, gets the estate and the nephew. How much, what do you think he gets? He gets nothing. He gets nothing. Zilch, nothing. That man gets nothing. His bag is empty, flowing in the wind, like Katy Perry said, a plastic bag in the street. You know what they do with that money? They go and open up their salon restaurant, bro. And all of the celebrities are there. And guess what they name it? They name it Lily's. They name it Lily's, bro. And then the movie ends. What makes this a black classic let me define what a black classic is it must have iconic actors bro it must have actors that change the industry that make an impact they must make social and political commentary now this isn't with everything because you know black people can just exist and the film can be iconic but even that essence of black people just existing having fun is social and political commentary it must be timeless me being 18 can i sit with my grandma and watch this film with her and both of us enjoy it. That's timeless. After the cookout watchability, am I able to go to a cookout, a family reunion, a party? I'm full of ribs, I'm full of steak, whatever I ate at the function. Can I come back home, sit down, and relax by watching this movie? Or is it gonna be like 12 years a slave and I gotta go contemplate my entire existence and cry for my ancestors for an hour after watching it and be depressed for the next week? Or can I feel rejuvenated after watching it? Last thing, black people winning. We need to see black people winning in this, succeeding, thriving, no black trauma. Let's see how well BAPS compares and lives up to these factors of ranking iconic actors this movie is full of not only iconic actors but celebrity appearances left and right y'all we got Halle Berry and Natalie Dizel rest in peace in the lead roles and y'all know both of them Cinderella we got Halle Berry in almost every single 90s movie we know of we can think of and now she's in like this new thing called bruise we got Bernie Mac in here rest in peace social commentary y'all this has so much of it now you think oh this is just a little happy dappy little film no this is full of social commentary because it's a mixture of southern black women going to the west coast with bougie white people and not being afraid to be themselves not once did they change their hair to fit in with whatever the white people got going on not once did they change their outfits their walk their demeanor their talk for nobody this heavily correlates with the black women deserve luxury movement this movie is the definition of material girl and last but not least 
And this is not the only social commentary. You can go in on this film and do an analysis. Promotion of black owned brands. Shop black owned. And BAPS encourages you to do that. They get to open not only a restaurant, but a salon. And still have money left over to boost their boyfriend's gig. This goes into, the social commentary goes into it being timeless and being able to be sat down and watched after a cookout. Why? Because this social commentary is still relevant today and it's still joyful enough. We see black people winning enough to be able to feel revived, energized, uplifted after you watch it. You may be wondering, okay, Taylor, BAPS meets all the criteria to become a black classic, a great black movie. What makes it a movie that transcends every other black american classic i'll tell you the reason baps transcends every other black classic it's because it meow it not only meets all of the criteria it's got suspense it's got plot twists it's got romance it's got comedy it's got social awareness it's got a bomb ass soundtrack it's got action adventure fashion 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 it's got everything y'all and that is why BAPS is the greatest black American and yeah I'll say it greatest film of all time thank you for coming to my presentation this has been Bias But Believable I'm Taylor Cassidy you can follow me anywhere at Taylor Cassidy J on Twitter at Tay Cassidy J watch Black Girl Magic Minute on TikTok and I hope you have a booty like a BBL